Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, and just to be on the safe side, hello, it's Lynn here from the Learn English Network, again, for another week of rounding up all those comments and trying to make some sense of a few of them. (laughs) So, um, thank you for joining us, and let's get on, because there's quite a bit to get through this week. And it all kicks off this week with Sibu, and Sibu opens the proceedings with, I am a new user, how can it works? Okay, so I, capital I, am a new user, that's fine, then you need a full stop. How does this work, question mark? And Mona came along and said, welcome, it's already working. It's a text chat board. You leave a post or a comment and others will reply to you. Eventually, our teacher, Lynn, kindly will correct our writing mistakes and record it as a weekly podcast. Um, Very good, Mona. Just, I would say, um, eventually, (laughs) very true, uh, (laughs) eventually, one day, uh, our teacher Lynn kindly corrects our writing mistakes and records it as a weekly podcast. He, she, it does something. Hamed came along and said, hello. Hamed, capital H, full stop. Hello, Hamed, said Mona. So, Hamed, have a look at how Mona wrote it. That's the way to do it. And Princess Sissy came along and said, Hello, this is my first post, and I'm not quite sure how it actually works, but I hope to figure out quickly. So, Princess, hello, capital H, this is my first post, comma, and I'm, with a capital I, not quite sure how it works, comma, but I, capital I, hope to figure it out quickly, full stop. I said, hello, princess. It works, especially if you listen to the corrections. Like now. (laughs) Uh, Dora said, welcome. Hi, Dora. I hope that you would like this site. Mm, I hope that you like this site. And then full stop. Don't forget your ending punctuation. You can save so many points against you in tests if you just get your end punctuation correct. Uh, Mona said, welcome, princess. Mona, capital W. Salah said hi, um, which, yeah, we, we get so many highs, Salah. Try and be, I do say at the beginning, try to say more than hi, okay? Uh, Mona said, I just finished the hangout with Amtsu. It was quite fun. Uh, I think you mean Amatsu. And um, I'll tell her that you've posted it on here. Did you draw anything? asked Seb. Ha ha, yes, Seb, a goat and a house. <laughs> Uh, But goat doesn't start with an H. Where is your doodle creation? Said Zeb. Um, And Mona said, Zeb, I just noticed you said an H. Is is that correct or it's just a typo mistake? Okay, a typo is a mistake. So it's like saying a mistake mistake. Um, You just say, or is that just a, or was that just a typo? Zeb said, more than just a typo. I just can't control my French side. H is not pronounced in French. Well, it's pronounced with a sort of A sound, Zeb, so you were quite right to say an H. And um, I said, we do say an H, H. It's about the sound as well as the vowels. Um, Zeb said, hey, I may not be wrong after all, Mona. I've just checked it out and read this. If you're pronouncing just the letter H, then it'd be an H. But for words starting with H, the sound isn't a vowel sound, so it would be a historic event. At least that's how I say it. I'll agree with this guy, said Zeb. Uh, And don't forget, you can have um, a historic event, a hotel, but an hour, an honour. It's about the sound, okay? Uh, By the way, said Mona, was he talking about the French H or the English one? (laughs) Good question. English, of course, said Zeb, with a typical French touch. A historic event sounds like an historic event. (laughs) Some people do drop their H's and so they will use an as well, um, but it's not correct. Okay. Uh, It seems more difficult to say a H. (laughs) Maybe Lynn can tell us. It would be really difficult for me to say a H, (laughs) as you can hear, an H, an H. (laughs) she'll record it at some point said Zeb it's not a real big deal for me as people also have to get used to my French sounds when I speak English quite right Zeb okay Uh, I would say it's not really a big deal for me okay on the G plus um, Zeb then says more alphabet fun discussion in a reply Amatsu wrote it's my attempt at an H I got this one right yeah (laughs) Um, Now, I wouldn't say the G+, I'd just say on G+, or in the community on G+, maybe. Uh, Yes, said Mona, we started with the G. I do not know where it should be, lol. That was my first time in the Hangout. No one told me that I have to save my artwork. (laughs) You don't have to, Mona. You know 
you know what we're like. Uh, there's no real have tos beyond the basic rules of be nice, be kind. <laughs> and if you can't be good, don't get caught. Um, you have to, said Seb. I'm looking forward to your first doodle online art gallery. Absolutely. Um, I replied to Zeb, it should have started at F, but that's the problem when different people run sessions. The drawings were great and I loved the comment about the hair ruffle. It made my day, Zeb. <laughs> You'll have to go to the community to see what the heck we're talking about. One of the downsides of being a network is that sometimes things happen off different places, off in different places. The good side about it is it keeps you on your toes. Majid said, hello, my, t oh, hi, my teacher. So capital H, Majid. Uh, if you do not mind, please tell me about your schedule when you're on SCP. Please tell me the time depend on GMT, so I will tune myself with your time to be there and greeting this fortune to practice spe speaking with you. Regards, Majid. So, um, if you don't mind, a capital I, because at the beginning of a letter or an email, we capitalise the first part of the the, the actual um, body of the email or the body of the letter, okay? Uh, so, don't mind, D-O-N apostrophe T, or do not mind, two words, D-O space N-O-T. Um, please, could you tell me about your schedule when you are on, I think you mean Skype, which is capital S-K-Y-P-E, full stop. Then start with a capital P, you need a space after the full stop. Please tell me the time um, in GMT, so Greenwich Mean Time, and I will, capital I, um, adjust my time to be there <laughs> and take advantage of this good fortune to practice speaking with you. <laughs> Regards, capital R, Majid, it's your name, capital M. I said, hi, Majid, you'll need to be a member of the forum to join us. Don't worry, it's free. For the times, go to the homepage and click on calendar at the bottom. OK, Dora said hi and VK or Vikram said hi there. Vikram also said hello. Aliel said hello. Niha came along and said, hello, ma'am. I'm new here. I want to improve my English. I'm not confident to speak English fluently to anyone, so please help me. I don't know how to start with. Okay, uh, so Neha, capital H, and then you just call me Lynn, L Y W N E, and then I'm new here, capital I apostrophe M. I want to improve my English, capital E, comma, but I'm not confident, and that's capital I apostrophe M, um, enough to speak English, capital E, fluently, full stop. Uh, so please help me. I don't, it's don't, D-O-N apostrophe T, know how to start with what? You need to put something. I don't know how to start with the game. Um, so I just say, I don't know how to start here, maybe. And you just did know how, okay? Um, Dora popped in and replied to Neha, said, I think you should check the calendar for the voice sessions. Here's the link. Thank you, Dora. And Zeb said, hi, Neha, this is Zeb. Here, it's quite informal, like the playground of a school with people chatting around before going back to class. Do the same. Join the chatter and relax. Dora said, yep. <laughs> and also said, welcome here. Uh, we don't say welcome here. Yeah, just welcome or um, yeah, just welcome is enough. That's fine. Uh, welcome to the f welcome to the chat board or welcome to the discussion, maybe. But just welcome is enough. Uh, Neha said to Dora, "Thank you. How are you doing? How are doing actually?" So capital T for thank you, and how capital H are you doing? And don't forget, your question mark comes right after the word. No space. Okay, the space comes after the question mark. It comes after the exclamation mark. It comes after the full stop. Da -da 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 -da. OK, uh, good, said Dora. And what's about you? OK, good, comma, and what about you? OK, Aja said, hello, Neha, how are you? Don't forget, Aja, get rid of all those little dots. They're really annoying. How are you? Question mark. Can you message me on my Gmail ID? Blah, blah, because I use some time, but it's but I live mostly online on Gmail. OK, because I use some time, maybe because I use this some time, uh, comma, but I live most of the time on Gmail. And then don't forget your full stop. And Gmail is actually a product, so capital G. Uh, Joseph said, hi, is there anyone to speak English with? Can I start a conversation with you? And that was at Taneha. Um, 
So, Joseph, capital H and comma. Is there anyone here to speak English with? Capital E, question mark. And don't forget the voice sessions. If you want to speak, you'll need to join our voice sessions. We do them on different platforms, G+, Skype, Virtual Worlds, Kitely, Join Me Sometimes. Um, so discuss is really text chat. Uh, can I start a conversation with you? You need a question mark. OK, so don't forget your punctuation. OK, question mark if you're asking a question. Full stop if you're just making a statement and an exclamation mark if you're really surprised about something, but really surprised. Don't overuse them. Abby said, hi, Neha, are you come from? Mm. I think what you want to say, Abby, there is where do you come from? And that's a capital W. Um, nice use of question mark there, though, Abby. Neha said, I'm from, I'm from Kerala. How are you? Where are you from? OK, good bit of punctuation, Neha, but you need to capitalise. So I'm, capital I, apostrophe M, Kerala, place name, capital K. Beginning of a sentence, beginning of a question, capital H for how are you? And where are you from, capital W. OK, um, then Mona came along and said, I am a popular member now. <laughs> Everyone will be wondering who's Mona. Has she invented something? Ah, a two minute recording. Lol. <laughs> Um, Dora said, Mona, I think popularity is not everything, isn't it? OK, Dora, you need to, when you say something positive, you end it with is it. When you say something negative, you say some. You say it um, isn't it. OK, um, I don't think popularity is everything, is it, is what I would write there. Uh, yep, said Zeb, you start to be known around the network. Keep up the good job. Dora then said, well, that's like making castles in air. OK, castles in the air. And don't forget your full stop. Uh, Camille said, um, hi, Camille. Oh, I like that phrase, making castles in the air. Just saying hi, Dora. <laughs> Mona then said, hi, Dora, why do you think so? I'm more interested in learning, but I'm willing to enjoy that. So popularity for me is quite fun, but not a priority. And then... Um, and somebody said, I'm sorry, Mona, I was feeling a bit jealous, I guess. Uh, don't forget, whoever you are, full stop. And with your comma, no space after the word. The space comes after the comma. Aha, said Mona. So that guest is actually you, Dora. Oh, <laughs> well spotted, Mona. Zeb then said it creates contacts, interactions, bonds between people. And I wouldn't mind making a sandcastle with Mona. Now, what beach would be best? <laughs> We've got a beach in Kitely and you can actually make a sandcastle there. Well, you can pretend to make a sandcastle there. Thanks, Zeb, said Mona. That will be awesome. Are you watching Sandmasters? It's one of my favourite shows. Um, and Camille said, you watch TLC too? Mona then said, no, I do not. I've never heard of it. What about it, Camille? So, uh, what about it, Camille? Um, can you tell me about it? What about it can be a bit sort of negative, yes? Uh, are you going to the party? No, I'm not. What about it? And so basically, you know, why should I or um, what's it to do with you? <laughs> so careful of that phrase. Though sometimes the way we put words together can slightly change the meaning you think they intend. Um, I just thought you knew TLC because the show Sandmasters is aired on that channel here in our place. I've never heard of it, said Zeb. Mona, I guess they make sand sculptures, don't they? I've never heard of it either, Zeb, so you're not alone. Uh, Mona said, yes, it's awesome. You should check it on the web. So, Mona, you should check it out on the web. Uh, check it is more, is it right or wrong? Check it out is take a look. Again, the way we put the words together, it, you know, it's something you need to develop a feeling for. Zeb said, sand and ice sculptures are quite amazing sometimes. I'll probably not watch the TV series, though. Most of my watching is orientated to the Spanish world for the time being. Um, oriented. I'd say oriented towards, um, not orientated. OK, then Dora said, I think sandcastles don't remain worthwhile. OK, I think they don't. Um, we'd normally say, I don't think they do. OK, so I don't think sandcastles, sandcastles remain worthwhile. Um, Mona said, but it's worth building. It's all, it's all about having fun. So Mona, I'd say, but they are worth building. It's all about having fun. Quite right. I still build sandcastles. Uh, Hi, Zeb. I'm sorry if you have minded, said Dora. Mm, not sure what you meant there, Dora. I think you were just saying, hi, hi, Zeb. I'm sorry if you're upset or something. Oh, I'm sorry if I upset you. Maybe. She must be busy, Dora. 
um, said Mona, be patient. Yes, don't forget, we're not on 24-7, none of us. <laughs> none of You're not, we're not. <laughs> Dora smiled. Mona said, I wonder who's that guest who's voting up for us. Can you pick up a name so that we can recognise you? So, um, I wonder with an A is like to roam around. Uh, when you're thinking about something and wondering whether it's true or not, it's with an O to wonder with an O. Yep, I also wonder that thing, Mona. Dora, well done. You spelt it, you spelt it correctly. Don't forget your full stop, though. And Dora said, whatever. <laughs> Zeb said, Dora and Mona, look what I've found. If you're really serious about cre creating a high-end sandcastle, don't forget three other important tools. A big spade, your creativity, and a healthy measure of the Buddhist principle of impermanence. You're right, Dora, they're ephemeral, but it's worth it, isn't it? Mona, how big is your spade? Well, that's a very personal question. <laughs> Anyhow, that was a good conversation. Well done, everybody. Nina came along and said, I want to speak with SB. Uh, so, Nina, capital I, and try not to shorten things when you're practising your writing. Somebody, S-O-M-E-B-O-D-Y. Zeb said, I think Joseph and Abby are ready to start a conversation with you. Um, have a look a few messages down. And she also said, hi, Nina, feel free to jump in any conversation. Exactly. Scroll around, see if there's somebody else who's online or who's saying they want to talk, then contact them um, here or uh, on their Discuss profile, whichever works for you best, OK? Dora said, hey, Lynn, can you tell me tips for writing a good paragraph? I want it urgently because tomorrow is my English paper. Uh, or if anyone can, please. Hello, said Ajar. Hmm. Then Zeb was very helpful and said, Hi Dora, your question made me think of the English language section of the English magazine. I'm just back from there and yes, you've got many articles about writing, writing essays, all sorts of them. Uh, here is an extract and there's quite a few links there to the different types of essay you might be confronted with and how to... Uh, form them, how to structure them, etc. Really, it works, said Dora. Thank you. Oh, thank you, Zeb. You are a great fan friend. Thanks. Zeb then said, at some point, I thought that I started to know quite well the meanders of the network, but every time I decide to explore again, new paths appear. I hope they've been useful for your for writing your paper, Dora. Um, I've just, I, I replied and said, I've started saying, keep calm and explore the network. <laughs> um, Zeb said, I feel that staying calm is a bit tough for me, but I've always enjoyed my explorations so far. And Dora said, yes, they are, Zeb. OK, which I presume is um, they've been useful, <laughs> which I'm really glad about, Dora. Um, Dora then said, hello, all there. This is very informative and useful site, especially for me. So this is a very informative and useful site, comma, especially for me. Informative in the way that Lynn is here to correct our mistakes and useful in the way that doing conversation in English helps to increase our vocabulary. And also here are so many great friends like Zeb, Mona, your teacher, Aladdin, and many more who are always ready to help in an hour of need. So, um, informative in the way that Lynn is here to correct our mistakes, comma, and useful um, in the way of making conversation. We don't do conversation, we make it, okay? It's one of those make versus do. And if you look at the network, there's a whole list of make versus do <laughs> phrases. Um, then Dora carried on saying, if anyone has minded my any message, I'm really, really sorry. Um, I'm not sure what you mean by has minded or uh, if anyone is upset by anything I write, I'm really sorry. Um, Dora, it's no need, you've not written anything as far as I can see <laughs> that would be upsetting to anybody, okay? So don't worry about it. Don't, don't apologise all the time, OK? Uh, oh, I forgot. Thanks to all for their kind attitude. Um, thanks to everyone for their help is all I'd say there. Zeb said there's nothing to worry about, Dora. You've always also reminded me this quote. OK, you've also reminded me of this quote. Be who you are and say what you feel because those who mind don't matter and those who matter don't mind. From Dr. Sewers. Uh, keep enjoying yourself here. And I quite agree. Um, and don't worry, if you ever say anything that's completely out of order, I'll just delete it. I'm very strict like that. <laughs> and I have to hope you won't mind if I do. But uh, if I think it's bordering on maybe having a go at somebody, I will delete it. I'm, I, I, I don't make any bones about that. It's in the forum rules. Ahmed said, is anyone who explores more in English? Hmm. Um, 
So Amit, is there anyone, which is one word, here who would like to explore English more? And English with a capital E, don't forget your full stop. Uh, in fact, it's a question, so a question mark. Explore, said Dora. And I just wrote three question marks because I was with Dora. I wasn't quite sure what you were asking there, Amit. Majid said, hi, teacher. Uh, I already became a member of Forum and you dedicate a badge to me. But the point is, I do not do not know how to use the forum and how introduce myself there. Please drive me to do that. OK, I very rarely drive anybody to do anything. <laughs> OK, <laughs> so high teach is fine, but small I in the high. Uh, I have, capital I for I, have already become, with an O, a member of the forum. And you sent me a badge. OK, but the point is I, capital I, and do not or do not, D-O space N-O-T, know how to use the forum or how to introduce myself there. Um, please point me to how to do that. Maybe that's what you meant. OK, so capital P for your please, because it's the beginning of your sentence. Um, Zeb said, if you're a member of the forum, you can send private messages to other members of the forum. If you send a private message to Lynn, she will add you on Skype and then you should be able to join the Skype sessions. This was just to add up to Mona's reply. OK, not add up. Add up is numbers. One and one is two. That's adding up. Uh, this was just to add to Mona's reply. Hi, Majid, said Mona. This is the homepage of the forum. If you can notice, there are many topics there. You can introduce yourself under the topic new members. I hope you find this helpful. OK, so this helpful is two words. Uh, but I think that was just a typo, wasn't it, Mona? Um, then you put, uh, if you can notice, if you notice, yeah. Uh, can you see there are many topics there? Can you see the topics? But if you notice, there are many topics there. There are lots of topics there. <laughs> uh, Majid said, hi, Dora. Do you know when I want to have lunch and somebody else is beside me? What should I say for invite him or he here to have lunch with me? OK, um, I wouldn't put do you know. I put, you know, when you want to have lunch. OK, so um, comma. And somebody else is next to you, comma. What should I say to invite him or her, H-E-R, to have lunch with me? And then question mark, OK? Hi there, said Dora. You could say, would you like to have lunch with me? Perfect, Dora. Or also, please have today's lunch with me. Not so perfect, Dora. <laughs> Um, would you like to share my lunch? That's more sharing, OK? Uh, or if you mind saying that, you could also see Mona's comment below. Again, you're using mind, Dora. Um, and we do use do you mind, as in does it bother you? Um, but um, if you don't want to say that, it would be more natural. OK? Mona said, you can say, can we have lunch together? Or are you free this afternoon? I'd like to have you for lunch if you are free. Oh, Mona, thank you. <laughs> Is that with a glass of Chianti? <laughs> if you have someone for lunch, uh, you can have someone round for lunch to your house. But if you have someone for lunch, it's called cannibalism. OK, um, I'd like to invite you to lunch if you're free or I'd like to treat you to lunch if you're free. But I hope you wouldn't ever have someone for lunch <laughs> uh, in the afternoon, said Zeb. What time do you have lunch? 5 p.m. usually, said Mona. That's not lunch anymore, Mona. That's tea. <laughs> Seriously, um, if that's the case, I will be starving. Oh, ha ha, said Camille. <laughs> so seriously, if that was if that was the case, I would be starving. Yeah, um, Because it's you putting yourself in Mona's position, which obviously you wouldn't be able to do, Camille, because you'd get the munchies. Zeb said, I guess you could go for a snack between breakfast and lunch. Are snacks part of your diet, Mona? And Mona said, I wait for the rest of the family to come home so that we can eat together. That's why it has to be late lunch. OK, that's why it has to be a late lunch. It's not lunch, it's tea. <laughs> Camille said, that's so sweet. I can say that it's worth the wait then. Yeah, absolutely. Gosh, when is dinner time then, said Seb? Between 10 and 12 midnight. Oh, my goodness. And breakfast, asked Seb? It depends, Seb, said Mona. For me, if I wake up early, I'll have breakfast early. Zeb then said, I think you could easily live in Spain. Their lunch and dinner time are quite late too, in comparison to my own habits. I have lunch at around 1pm and tea, 
dinner by 8 p.m. Yes, it's not tea at 8 p.m. It's definitely dinner. There's definite times for when you can have these things, OK? Um, although we do have one that's brunch and that's the sort of breakfast lunch one. But the rest of the time, I think after three o'clock, you're no longer having lunch. <laughs> Uh, Zeb also said to Majid, when I'm at the pub, I say this one is on me or my round. But for lunch, I don't know. Maybe may I invite you? I'm not sure at all. But if you say that, I'll reply, OK, with pleasure. <laughs> Very good. Um, now, this week's um, session is going to be a little short in bits because I'm at a conference and I've been busy all week um, preparing the English magazine for its new look. So I'm going to leave it at that for today and I'll start recording the next one tomorrow and the one after that, the day after that, and then we should be round to Tuesday again. So sorry if I haven't got round to you yet, but I will, OK? And maybe it's in the future we'll do more little snippets like this so that it's not an hour and a half long. It's a lot of things to listen to then. So uh, thank you for everybody who contributed uh, up till now and I look forward to reading your comments tomorrow. Bye.